Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm pleased to be here with you today. Uh, and to the ranking member Steele, uh, members of the committee, uh, thank all of you for having me as a part of this hearing today. As many of you know, I'm a bit of a student and lover of history. And I take seriously George Santayana's admonition that those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. With his words in mind, I would like to take place today, uh, this year, and place it in a sort of a historical context. The 20th century was a time of great economic growth, but also a time of significant inequities and widespread racial discrimination. While every American was impacted by the Great Depression, Black Americans were especially devastated. By 1932, half of Black Americans were out of work and racial violence and discrimination were on the rise. Many Black Americans were initially energized by the presidency of Franklin Roosevelt. He courted Black voters, had Black visitors to the White House, and had Black advisors. Unfortunately, while the New Deal was credited uh, was having uh, ended the Great Depression, it was not a good deal for Black Americans. Racial discrimination, employment, marginalized Black Americans at a very critical juncture, preventing them from an equitable economic recovery. Roosevelt's implementation of Social Security was significant. It lifted millions of senior citizens out of poverty, but it did not cover farm and domestic workers where over 65% of Blacks were employed. At the end of World War II, millions of American veterans came home and re-entered civilian life. President Roosevelt had signed into law the GI Bill, which promised each educational benefits, job opportunities, and housing assistance for these returning veterans. It returned over $7 in benefits for every $1 it cost the American taxpayer and ushered in decades of prosperity in post-war America. Again, this enormously successful economic program discriminated against Black Americans. For example, the Veterans Administration adopted the Federal Housing Administration's discriminatory redlining policies should not Black Americans from the full benefits of the GI Bill. By the end of the summer of 1947, only two, not 2%, only two of the 3,000 GI Bill home loans were issued to Black veterans. The New Deal, and GI Bill are just two examples of how successful and widely celebrated economic programs left out and marginalized Black communities, exacerbating the wealth gap we have today. That's why Congressman Seth Moulton and I introduced the GI Bill Restoration Act. Our bill seeks to provide the descendants of Black World War II veterans some of the GI benefits their families should have enjoyed. This would be one step towards righting it wrong and addressing the wealth gap. I often invoke Alexis de Tocqueville, who said that the greatness of America lies not in being more enlightened than any other nation, but rather in her ability to repair her faults. Together, we can and we must heed the Tocqueville's words through his committed, this committee's work. We must work to dismantle barriers that have prevented Black Americans from achieving the American dream and identify public policy and business practices to encourage and assist every American to reach their economic potential. Thank you very much for having me today.
And now you're back. 